And, you know, as I said last week, uh, our season was going to be a journey. And obviously this week we're sitting here at 2-1 and one in our journey. And uh, we're a little disappointed, uh, which to me I think it's a good thing because our team and our players have uh, expectations. And uh, they expected to go into this game and they expected to win. So I was glad to see that our players are disappointed. Um, and, and as we said to our players on Saturday, you know, no one expects setbacks. But everyone has them, and for us, it's going to be really important uh, that we get to the, the the crux of what created the setback for us, and that's a good thing that we have a bye week this week to kind of uh, get the answers. I thought we played well in two parts of our uh, team, defensively and special teams, and on offense, I thought we were off. I thought our timing was off, and so uh, the bye couldn't have come at a better time for us, for us to be able to delve into the why, and, and, and we'll use this week to figure that out as well as get back to some of the fundamental things that we need to uh, move forward uh, in our journey. Um, Temple was a good team and we said that last week and uh, we give them credit, uh, all the credit for the win. But I also told our team, you know, one win won't define us and neither will one loss. And I, I think that's important that we understand that, again, when you're on a journey, uh, every step Every step is important, but no one more than the other. So we'll continue to move forward with this uh, and, and utilize this bye week to get us back on track. Um, before I open it up to questions, uh, we got some exciting news here uh, for us as a program that, uh, you know, uh, we're going to bring Ralph Friesen, a guy that has really uh, had a huge impact on my career as a mentor and as a coach, uh, back to College Park for the game Friday against Penn State next week. And I can't tell you the impact that Ralph has had on Maryland football, uh, the community, as well as college football. Uh, he is a guy that has I have the utmost respect for, that I've always looked up to as a guy that uh, loves and has passion for this place like I do. And so to be able to bring him back and honor him in the right way, uh, I know I'm excited as well as our team and, and our fans, and we're looking forward to having him back in College Park next week. And with that, I'll open it up to questions. At the Jack Lish Law Group, uh, not only will you feel like a member of their family, uh, you'll also receive uh, unprecedented customer service. We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jack Lish Law Group, the big dogs from the small firm, and we'll reward your trust. Call the big dogs today. Don't wait. Find us online at BigDogSmallFirm.com. How do you balance the time these, these two weeks? Is it all Penn State, or do you kind of look internally at the first week of this bye week? No, you definitely, uh, you want to do a little bit of both, but I think the big thing for us is we tend to go back and we do a huge self-scout to see who we were the first three weeks on video. Uh, offensively, defensively, and special teams. We spent a lot of time on the fundamental part of the game. Um, I think when you look at uh, the result on Saturday, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball, there were some fundamental things that we've got to get cleaned up. And so we'll, we'll put a big emphasis on the fundamentals. The next three days we'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then the players will have all Friday, Saturday again. And, but we'll also get a jump start on Penn State where we'll get some of the base game plan done. Uh, you know, in order where, you know, we'll work a little bit on some base stuff today. We'll work on some third down and red zone on uh, Wednesday and Friday. We'll mix in a little bit of both to give us a good jump start. You know, with the game being on Friday, everything pushes up on our schedule a day. So Sunday, which is typically a day off for us, will become a Monday for us. And so we'll get a three day jump start on them, but we'll also put a big emphasis on fundamentals across the board, offensively, defensively, and special teams. Specifically, Coach, about some of the breakdowns uh, Saturday offensively. What did, what were some of the trends that you really noticed, and, and how do you go about fixing those things moving forward? Well, it starts, number one, with, uh, you know, our pad level up front. You know, we had two opportunities to uh, to punch the ball in from the one-yard line, and as I said before, uh, very disappointed that with the backs we have and what we are capable and have shown the ability to be up front, that we couldn't do it, and again, uh, it's my job, you know, to show our team how to win these close games, uh, and that's that's on me. And I've got to, you know, it, it's great to to be disappointed, but you know, these close games to me, the the desire to win them are there. 
but how to. I mean, that's on the head coach to show us how to win in these close situations. You know, I know last year we had four games, I think, that we lost in the fourth quarter. And then, again, we had opportunities, you know, two different times in the low red zone and the goal line to, to win the game. And so that's on me as the head ball coach to figure out how to show our guys how to make these plays when they're there to be made. But, you know, fundamentally, playing high up front, uh, you know, I thought our pass sets weren't great. You know, we got our quarterback uh, with, uh, playing with the eye discipline that uh, it takes to execute the offensive system uh, across the board. You know, receivers and their depth of their routes, they were just – you know, we can go across the board, and what we typically do this time of year is each coach goes through this position group to see the fundamental things that we need to improve on, and that's what we work on this week. Do you have an update on Terrence Davis? Uh, yeah, you know, Terrence has a um, MCL sprain, um, so you know, right now with, with where he is, it's probably a four to six week deal, depending on how quickly the, the, the thing calms down. Um, so, you know, we're expecting him to be at least four to six weeks with an MCL. And just to kind of follow up on that, where, where do you see the offense line depth now as opposed to during fall camp when there were some concerns? Is it, has it? I mean, you know, we already were thin there, but, uh, you know, when you lose a player of Terrence's uh, caliber, he's a three-year starter for the most part and was playing at a high level for us, uh, you know, it's still the next man up mentality. Uh, it pushes Austin Fontaine up into the two deep, and then you now you know because of Ellis McKinney's versatility, you know we'll be able to slide him over to the right guard position. And again, he's a guy that's played a lot of football, uh, but now Austin Fontaine kind of moves himself into the rotation, which he played quite a bit in the second half of the Temple game. And uh, you know, so the depth is not necessarily where we want it to be, but we still have enough able bodies, and now we just got to get. Uh, these guys again playing fundamentally uh, a little cleaner than what we played on Saturday. Front row, um, Coach, what's the uh, update on Petrino's status um, after, after the game? Yeah, you know, he had a groin injury, and uh, you know, as of right now, he won't kick the next couple of days here. We're trying to let it calm down. Um, we won't know probably until we start preparation for Penn State on Sunday uh, how he feels. Um, it, he didn't tear it, so that's a good thing. But uh, he has a significant you know, pain down in that area, so we're trying to let that calm down. Uh, we won't kick him here the next couple of days to give him an opportunity to kind of heal up, and then we'll see where he is uh, after we finish this three-day uh, schedule. Yeah, man, I, I know you uh, you addressed it a little bit uh, before, but what is uh, what do you want Josh to work on this week, and, you know, how is he sort of progressing? Yeah, you know, I, I, Josh didn't have a great game, but I, I think, again, across the board from us as coaches all the way down to the players on the offensive side of the ball. I wasn't happy with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's easy to say because, like, as I told Josh, you know, the quarterback gets the brunt of the uh, uh, accolades, but also he takes the brunt of the, the negative negative uh, things when, when things don't go well on offense. And because we ask so much of our quarterback with the RPO system and decision making, you know, I just thought Saturday we were a little off and some of it is not just the quarterback. You know, we had some guys coming free, some free hitters in his face uh, when he was trying to make decisions and deliver the ball. So we've got to get that cleaned up. But, uh, you know, again, he played well the first two games. Uh, he had a setback and we all had a setback offensively uh, this past game. But my expectation because of his experience that we'll bounce back, we'll get some things cleaned up this week. and. Uh, 